Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics with a really fun and quick project for you today. How to make these fabric carrots and the little mini pillow. And you can see it's adorable displayed in this little metal tray. I think we found that maybe Hobby Lobby. Um, just a kind of fun Easter accent. Um, I love springtime. This is the uh, collection from Andover called Lady Tulip by uh, Laundry Basket Quilts. And I love the collection so much. I did the pint size tabler. That's a series we have running. If you haven't checked that out, be sure to do that. Each month I'm teaching how to make the walk. Um, kits available on that, or maybe you can just download that and use your own fabric if you wish. And of course you're seeing the fabrics on the set and we have more kits coming out with this collection. It really resonated. I think it's so, uh, very calming. I think it's really fun and pretty. So our project today is a free download. We have some limited kits uh, for you that'll include all your fabrics uh, to do the carrots um, as well as your applique shape will be pre-fused and laser cut for you, which is kind of nice. You no need to trace that or cut that out. We'll do that for you. We have some fusible webbing on the back. Um, of course, you'll need to have your own stuffing, but we have some fun uh, pipe cleaners. They're called chenille stems is the formal word, but I think we all call them pipe cleaners. Those will also be included in the kit. So if you pick that up, you don't, you don't need to run out and find those. Uh, your download, um, the instructions will be in the kit if you're getting that, but if you're gonna just be joining us from home, using some of that fabric in your stash, we welcome that and we love that. Be sure to grab that pattern and we'll get started on how we make these fun carrots. Let's just start there. You'll grab, you know, four different uh, kind of oranges. This one, of course, has the cream and the orange. We thought that was kind of fun to kind of add some variety. So you'll get your fabrics. And the first thing that I recommend you do is we'll just cut those each to a four and a half by 10. And I cut those at the same time stacked with the right side together so they're perfectly stacked. And then we'll just redraw your attention right away to, let me just put our little tray off to the side. We can enjoy looking at that. Right here, we'll just finding that midpoint at the bottom, easy to do. We'll just fold that in half. And I'm gonna mark that with a friction pen. And I don't really need the second piece of that for the moment. So we're just going to create that V, that deep V, starting at that midpoint on the bottom and drawing up to the corner. This is a fun project to do. You can easily accomplish maybe a couple hours. You'll be all done and have something really fun to display on a special table, maybe in your entryway. Place that right side together. And of course, you would pin that. And per our instructions, there's a dash line there. That's going to be your quarter inch uh, seam allowance. And it comes right down into a deep V. And I wanted to show you that. We've actually sewn that ahead of time. What I want to call your attention to is go ahead and shorten your stitch length. We're going to be adding a lot of stuffing in there. And that point right down there that we'll be pushing out with our point turner We'll experience some stress as we push that out. So you can see from the overhead camera, we backstitch well into that V when we came down. And you can kind of just visualize where that quarter inch um, is gonna is kind of kind of run, it starts to run into the other line, right? And so that's where you could potentially sew straight off that if you want, and then start on this edge. It, however you want to do that, but make sure you reinforce really well in that valley. And then I'm going to grab my rotary cutter and let's just cut straight on that line. And we will be turning that through, of course, using our point turner to assist us because it's pretty challenging to get into that V. Now, before we even start to turn, let's look at that fabric down in there. You see, that's my, that's my pivot point, but look at all this extra fabric. That's not doing us any, any good. So we're gonna trim a lot of that away and kind of just carve that out right there. And hopefully that'll help us get a much better 
point. As you can see from some of these others, none of them were completely pushed out. But a carrot, think about that. It doesn't come to an exact point. It kind of has that rounded tip. So this is in line with what a true, you know, carrot, of course, looks like. This is where that point turner, oh, this is just gold. You know, whether you're trying to turn out something to a point as we are here, or maybe you have something that's a circle, that's this other side. And I love that that tool from Clover serves both purposes. So you're just gonna work that through all the way. And you wanna have some polyfill ready to go. So of course you'll be repeating the process I just did for this carrot. And of course you're just gently working that point out I think that was the most time consuming part. I remember this when we were putting this together. It's just trying to get that tool in there. Sometimes I'll get a Richard Hemming needle and kind of scoop that out. I have, however, frayed my fabric. I have to be very careful doing that. So you have to kind of just keep working it through all the way. And once that's where you want, and I want to push that out just a little bit more. There we go. I feel like that's, that's looking like a carrot. Once you have that uh, pushed out and you're, you're happy with what you're seeing, just turn that edge under about a quarter of an inch and give that a good press all the way around. Just all the way around. We would run a basting stitch. I think I've got one of those handy. You can either run that basting stitch. This is a heavier thread here. If you've got that, maybe you like quilting by hand and you've got that heavier thread. Or you could use your own machine thread and maybe use like three strands of that. And we're gonna run long basting stitches. This is what this would look like at this point. The edge is turned down. You could either just stuff it and then do the basting stitch or do it now, it doesn't matter. But I'm just running long stitches around the top. Okay, once you have that like this, Leave that. Don't cut your thread. Notice I have my beginning and I have my end. We're going to just put that aside for now as we work on making kind of our stems. Now we've used three strips on the top of each one of the carrots. And I mentioned that they're formable and that's where the chenille stem comes in. But we first need to create the housing for the chenille stem to kind of live in. So you'll take your green fabrics that are in your kit, or again, maybe from home, and our instructions will just guide us into, and I'm just gonna place this this time with the wrong sides together, and I'll just cut them as a group. So we really like the frayed look, but I'm gonna give you a couple options here. I also love using a pinked edge. I love pink edge. It's just very sweet, it's kind of country looking, um, and easier to achieve. If you don't have one of those on hand, no, I believe I know we do have those on the website. You just type in, in the search box, um, pinking blade. And if you're watching, obviously, um, online now uh, from YouTube, that link will be um, available for you. So you can just cut with a straight blade your one inch. And then let me show you what that will look like here. We just came back and sewed a quarter inch on either side of that. And then you go in, if you want to have that frayed look like we have here. It's very simple to achieve a couple of ways. You can go in with your seam ripper and kind of distress that. You see how it's starting to come apart? I'm basically kind of damaging that edge. That's one way to, to kind of do that. And you can rough that up with your hands and kind of just, well, kind of mess up the fabric and then trim it so you don't have kind of a complete frayed mess. And that's one way to do it. Another way, we can even do that a little bit down here, 
that you're just kind of snipping in a little bit here and there. Again, kind of unseating the weave, the grain, creating that opportunity to go in and again, kind of mess that up. Kind of purposely fussing with it to give that a frayed edge. That's a little, that's work, right? We know that's some work. But if you love that look of that frayed, kind of more country look, um, that's how you'll achieve it. Or if you just like that cleaner look, like we're showing on that side, and you can see it's just naturally going to fray the more you have contact. The other option that I talked about that's really charming is that pinking blade. If you've got an extra rotary cutter, you'll simply load that into uh, your blade and you use it like any other. And look how adorable that is. It is so cute. So when we're cutting our one inch strips, it's that point that you're measuring from. You come down and we did that one uh, ahead of time. And that's what this one looks like. So it's really cute. So you can imagine that as well would be a nice look. And you're not really um, having to kind of do that extra work to get that frayed edge. So I wanted to give you those two options. I think they're both really fun. Hey, we'll work with the, we'll work with the, uh, the pinked edge. That's really fun. Let me get a little bit cleaned up here. Once you've created that, you just sewed a quarter inch from those points. Now the chenille stems or pipe cleaners, however you like to refer to them, will just be inserted inside, just like that. You'll repeat that for each one of the carrots. You'll repeat that and you'll cut those strips. And once you have that, push that down, simply fold it in half like that. You will create a bunch. We had three of these. We just group them together. And you could you see that from the overhead? We just grab a thread from the machine. Again, if you have that heavier weight quilting thread, and we just uh, bunch them together and tightly wrap that so that it just contains that. Now we'll grab our carrot again, and this is why we left this in place. You'll want to place that in the center about two inches down. You want to make sure you are using some pretty heavy thread or multiple strands of thread. The first time I did this, it broke. And that, that, you know, not the end of the world. I just went and ran, got more strands of thread and uh, just had to run that basting stitch again. So you'll simply tie that off just like that. If you're inclined to kind of weave that in and out and in there through the greenery, you could. Let me just tie another knot. I think I'd tie that off one more time just to be safe. And now we can form that. And now we have our carrot. We'll put that right inside our tray with our other ones. Okay, really fun. I think the chenille, or not the chenille, but the pink edge is my favorite. I get to jump into the project a little bit quicker and I don't have to distress my fabric. And I think it's a really charming look. Okay, the pillow, very straightforward. Um, we've got a cream fabric. It could even be the same cream fabric. When we first made our pillow, we used the same fabric on the front and back. I said, hey, mom, for our kits, let's have fun. Let's use two different fabrics if you're getting the kit. So I've got two fabrics just for the fun. Like I said, that's the back, that's the front. You know, you're just gonna, that's the part I love about kits with prefused laser cut applique no tracing, no cutting. I get to just peel off the paper backing, iron that down. 
stitch that with a coordinating thread. I think we even just did kind of an off-white cream. And you'll, of course, be placing that right side together, sewing, leave an opening in the bottom, maybe two inches or so, a quarter inch seam allowance, clip those corners, turn that through, use your point turner again, and then just whip stitch that the bottom close we did that here so that way when it's sitting in the tray they're not seeing that little whip stitch and again if you're going to be joining us from home um, we have a reverse for fusible uh, applique on here you'll just grab a piece of your uh, heat and bond light lay that on there trace around roughly cut around that iron that to the back of your bunny fabric whatever you're choosing Peel off that paper backing, iron it down, and of course, you're stitching around. So just a fun project made, like I said, in just a couple hours. Also great for gift giving, maybe a housewarming gift. So thanks again for giving me part of your day. I'll see you soon on another shabby video.